Stay tuned for a cozy kitchen episode of Art Zone. Hi and welcome to the show. I'm Nancy Guppy and since this is the season of twinkling lights and holiday rituals, we are coming to you from the home kitchen of my very good friend, Eric. Now every year, Eric and his baking pal, Joe, get together and make cookies to give away to friend and foe alike. And you gotta take a look at these, look at this. These are so beautiful and even a Mr. Bill one right there. Nice job, you guys, well done. All right, we've got a terrific array of art for you, including music from the band Skates, an exit interview with Greg Cusera, and a seasonal movie minute. And we'll start with the annual holiday classic, A Christmas Carol. Always an audience favorite, this year's production at ACT features the stellar Amy Thone and R. Hamilton Wright sharing the roles of Jacob Marley and Ebenezer Scrooge. I'm Amy Thone, and I'm an actor here in Seattle, and I'm a teacher, and I'm a mom. I was one of those fortunate or unfortunate souls. I didn't even know that you could choose not to be an actor. I just was always an actor. My parents called me Sarah Bernhardt when I was four. Um, I always did plays. I played, mm, yes, <laughs> any penny in kindergarten. I just always wanted to be an actor. And then I remember at one point, like when I was 22 or 23, I thought, oh, I could have studied something else. I am R. Hamilton Wright. People call me Bob. It is now, oh gosh, 46 years, I think. 1975 is sort of where I think I started my apprenticeship in the theater, which continues today. <laughs> I first met Bob Wright in 1990, and I was an intern at the Seattle Repertory Theater because I was in the third year of my MFA program, and I thought I was in heaven. And I got $125 a week, and that seemed like king's ransom to me. And I was in a production of Much Ado About Nothing at Seattle Repertory Theater, and Bob Wright was in it. And I just thought he was, is, one of the most generous and humble and funny and smart. I saw him perform in a show about 15 years ago, and I leaned over to my husband at that time and said, he's answering questions that the rest of us don't even know how to ask yet. He's just so good. In this production, I've been given the great opportunity to play Ebenezer Scrooge, as solitary as an oyster. That's in the text. He's lonely. He's mean. Cratchit, what do you think you're doing? Sir, the fire's going Leave on. it! Get back to work. Yes, sir. It's a story of reclamation and of, uh, the, frankly, the power of love. There's a lot of humor in it. Following this man who has been stunted by trauma in his life and has resorted to closing himself off totally from the rest of mankind and not allowing his heart to feel anything. Oh, well, lion. Don't be cross. No, don't be cross, uncle. What else can I be when I live in such a world of fools as this? Out upon Merry Christmas. Eh? What's Christmas time for you but a time for paying bills without any money? A time for finding yourself a year older and not an hour richer. Bah, humbug. If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled with his own pudding. It's the ark. You, you start, you know, just lonely and miserable and sad and closed off. And it's written so beautifully by Greg Falls and by Charles Dickens. You know, when he wakes up and he discovers that he's made, he says, oh. Oh my. It's like the stones have come out of his heart. And he's light and he's happy and he's giddy. I am as as a drunken man. <laughs> Woo. To play that kind of transformation and arc on stage, that's just like solid gold pretend. Ebenezer. To see what happens to him through this 
whether it's a dream or a hallucination or an actual, you know, coming of real spirits, I think every time we do it, it's, it touches people. Even people who I know who are pretty cynical. Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> and now, especially now, when we are all kind of coming out of this hibernation, it is remarkable to be in rehearsal with other people and to the idea of being in an audience again after two years. It's its own story of reclamation and reunion. So I just think this is a splendid thing to, to come back to. <laughs> Plays very funny and there's, you know, there, I don't want to spoiler alert, but there are some new things this year and I, there is that ultimate sense of joy and jubilation and celebration in this text and in this production and in this theater in the environs and I think they're gonna, you know, bring this building back to life. Hey! I do have a fear. There's gonna be a little boy in the front row who says, Mommy, that's a woman! You know, and I'll be like, bah, um, Because that, you know, that may throw people. Or And we use, you know, language, very male language. I say, I, I will be a second father to you. And um, we're not changing any of that. And that may create like a cognitive dissonance for people. And I think that's good. These dark shadows will haunt me forever. Show me! I was thinking about this the other day. We did the Marley scene, and I was playing Marley, and she was playing Scrooge. Hi, Jacob Marley. Uh, and I realized after it, I didn't, it, it was the scene. I didn't find myself responding or thinking even about the fact that she was or was not a man. Like so many things, I think it just takes a blink or two, and then you just, this is just such a wonderful actor, so. And I think in many ways, it calls into question everything you think about the plot. Your presumptions about what this particular story is are sort of turned on their head, maybe, at the very beginning. And as long as you can ride that and just go, okay, I'll go there, um, I think it's a great entree into seeing the play in a new light. Uncle Scrooge. Uncle, Uncle Scrooge. Redemption, we're all hoping, reclamation. We're all hoping um, the quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. I think we all pray for grace. We're just having a great time. And I think that it's gonna bear fruit with the play because we're attacking the play like we've never done it before. We're having a great time and, I'm, and I think that the audience will also. A Christmas Carol runs now through December 26th. Ticket information is at acttheater.org. Our music this week is Skates, performing Oh Yeah from their record, Together We Are Skates. I'm in love. Ooh, wah, wah. Ooh, wah, wah. 
wake up together we are skates and keep up with the band's live performance schedule on Bandcamp. Greg Kucera and his gallery are a Seattle institution. From the day he opened his doors in 1983, Greg has been a leading voice in the regional art scene and a fierce advocate for the artists he represents. Well, 38 years in, Greg decided it was time for a change. He sold the gallery to his trusted longtime associates and moved to a castle in the south of France. But before he hit the road, I wrangled Greg for this exit interview. Hi, Greg. Hi, Nancy. All right, so the gallery opened in 1983. On a scale of one to 10, how naive were you about what owning a gallery would entail? I would put that at about a nine. I'd learned a lot from Diane Gilson, who I'd worked for, but I had learned a lot also from just wandering, wandering around and seeing what the galleries were doing. But the, the prospect of owning a business was, was, you know, an amazing shift in my life. Name one, just one favorite moment from those 38 years. Nancy, that is so cruel. Okay, um, in 2009, we had our second show of the G's Bend Quilters. And again, we brought uh, several of them up to Seattle from, from Alabama. And we had thrown a dinner for them at our home. And at the end of that dinner, Rebel Mosley, who is really the great singer in that group, stood up and she she sang for us he's got the whole world in his hands and she sang all the various choruses of it and then she sang uh he's got the whole world in his hands he's got greg and larry in his hands and it just made me cry i'll never forget the feeling of having this very elderly black lady celebrate these two gay guys who were throwing a party for them. That's meaningful. That is exquisite. You've shown lots of big name artists, Helen Frankenthaler, Carrie James Marshall, Kiki Smith, but your genius to me is recognizing new talent and case in point is the fairly recent Cornish College of the Arts grad, Anthony White. How can you tell when an artist has that special quality? I do think that there is something that happens with some of these artists, and it certainly has happened with Anthony, where they realize the gravity of the moment that they're being represented, and the dealer, myself in this case, recognizes it as well. And when I went to Anthony's studio to meet him, one of the questions that I asked him was, what do you want out of a gallery relationship? And he said, I want to see my work at the Met. You know, I've had artists say, I want to be in a Whitney Biennial. But to say they wanted to see their work at the Met, that seemed very special to me. You sold Cosera Gallery to Jim Wilcox and Carol Clifford. What is it about Jim and Carol that gives you confidence that the gallery is in good hands? Working with Jim for the last 23 years and seeing in him the ideals that, that I have for the gallery and knowing that Jim will never mistreat someone and knowing that Carol uh, holds those same values. You're moving to France, a country known for its bread, wine and cheese. Are you gluten-free? I am not. I am a gluten addict. Are you sober? I'm going to be the social pariah over there because I really don't like wine much. Are you lactose intolerant? No. I am, I am so tolerant of lactoses. I love those cheeses. So you'll be living in a castle with your best friend Larry and your partner Sean. Three men, one castle. Who will be king? We'll be fighting over that crowd. <laughs> Greg, 
Greg may be gone, but Greg Cusera Gallery is going strong. Catch Quilts and Etchings by G's Ben Quilters now through December 23rd. More information is at gregcusera.com. Hi, my name is Matt Lynch, and welcome to the holiday edition of the Movie Minute. Today I want to talk to you about a movie called Deadly Games from 1989. It also goes by the title Dial Code Santa Claus. It's a French horror film about a kid who is terrorized by a department store Santa that was recently fired by his mom. On va l'attendre toutes les deux, hein? What the department store Santa doesn't know is that the kid is obsessed with Rambo and that their giant mansion is full of booby traps and a giant basement full of toys. It's one of the more unpleasant and intense movies I've seen about this sort of thing. It's not some diet home alone comedy. It's one of the most intense things that you could find along these lines. It's, you really got to see it. Okay, you can find Deadly Games in our special holiday horror section. It's even in 4K. Once again, I'm Matt Lynch, and that was your Holiday Movie Minute. And that's a wrap. Thanks so much for tuning in this week and all year long. We're going to take a break for the holiday, but we'll be back in 2022 with lots more great local art. So enjoy the season, and we'll see you next year. Now it's cookie time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, 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 that's my best guy. What? Drop it. Here, you can have this guy. He's already dead. What are you talking? There's so many good ones. Why can't I have one of these? Hey, look, these are our armies, okay? Just, yeah. Okay. Get ready to go here. This is weird. Okay. As your party of adventurers moves through the enchanted forest, you can see through the trees in the distance across the meadow an orc and a gargoyle. Uh, orc and gargoyle, I challenge you to a duel to the death. Arr. Excellent. Roll for your attack. Two d20s. Oh, you've taken off the leg of the orc. Mm. They roll for revenge. More damage. More Twice da as much damage. Mm -hmm. Oh no, broken wing. Mm -hmm. Broken wings all around. Mm. Oh, look, the head came off too. Oh well. <laughs> Scooping up frosting. Mm. Head butts. Another leg wound. I'm not Mr. Bill. I'm Mr. Cookie. Mr. Christmas Cookie to you. And I'm the best guy. My superpower is pure white sugar, pure white flour, and gobs of pure butter. That's all you need for a nutritious holiday season. Take it from me, Mr. Cookie.